Hello, and welcome to Refuting Rationality, the show where we refute the YouTube atheist rationality rules. In today's episode, Mr. Rationality is going to try and defend atheism from the improbability of atheism. Let's begin. Have you ever wondered what the statistical likelihood of your existence is? If we just scratch the surface, you are the result of one sperm out of 400 billion and one egg out of 300. And you are the result of one man who was the result of one sperm out of 400 billion, and one egg out of 300, and so on and so forth. If we And right off the bat, Mr. Rationality appears to not understand how probability works. Although I realize I probably should have let that continue a little longer, but he's making the claim that a person's individual existence is improbable because there is, they are the result of one sperm out of four, one sperm out of four hundred billion. Though of course he doesn't justify that any other sperm would produce a different person. These odds are actually in favor of our existence. For instance, what are the odds that no sperm comes in contact with an egg? That would be the same probability. So right off the bat, he's got his probabilities backwards. Before we clearly define and proceed to debunk the argument from improbability, I first want to emphasize that because this argument is a teleological one, that is, an argument based on perceived evidence of deliberate design in the natural world, it commits many of the same fallacies as many of the other teleological arguments, such as the watchmaker analogy. So, no flaws then? Because I already refuted that video. Put it in its simplest form, the argument from improbability goes as follows. The universe, and particularly life, was either created by random chance or by a god. The probability of life emerging in the universe was outrageously unlikely. However, despite the overwhelming odds, life does exist in the universe. Therefore, it is more reasonable to conclude that life was created by a god rather than by random chance. Therefore, God exists. Or to put it in a colloquial form, and to paraphrase the cosmologist Fred Hoyle, the probability of natural processes producing living organisms is comparable to the chance that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from the materials therein. The chances are extraordinarily improbable. When presented this way, it's easy to see why so many find this argument seductive. When we ponder the sheer improbability of everything around us, I at least can understand why so many people find the argument from improbability to be reasonable and convincing. But, and as I'm about to demonstrate, when exposed to the slightest of scrutiny, it embarrassingly crumbles apart. The first major fault with the argument from improbability is that it commits a massive black and white fallacy within its first premise. It asserts that either the universe is a product of random chance, or it is the product of intelligent design, without justifying why these two conclusions are the only possibilities. Common sense would justify those being the only two pro possibilities. If you make a claim that somebody is making a bifurcation fallacy, or black and white fallacy, the burden is on you to demonstrate. If there is a third option, present it. Spoiler alert, he doesn't actually present one. He tries though, but fails miserably. There is no such thing as non-random chance. It's actually pretty redundant to say random chance. Chance by definition is inherently random. If you want me to justify why these are the only two options, then you are asking me to prove a negative. You are asking me to prove that something doesn't exist. Made especially difficult because I wouldn't even know what to call that something that doesn't exist. Intelligent random chance? That would be a contradiction. By doing this, it also subtly attempts to shift the burden of proof. It does this because it insists that unless someone else can provide a third option, then one of the two options it proposes must be correct. Which is not how logic works. Yes, it is. You are the one claiming the possibility of a third option. Therefore, it is your burden of proof to present said third option. If, however, you agree that there is no third option, then don't cry fallacy. In relation to the black and white fallacy, the argument from improbability, like all teleological arguments, also crucially ignores the fact of evolution by natural selection. For those of you in need of a reminder, 
Natural selection is a non-random, natural process whereby organisms that are better suited to their environmental pressures, such as predators and changes in climate, will tend to survive and reproduce in greater numbers than others of their kind, thus ensuring the perpetuation of those favourable traits in succeeding generations. What makes natural selection so important, and what also causes it to crush the vast majority of teleological arguments, is that it proves that life isn't the product of chance. It proves that the premise that life was either created by random chance or by a god is completely and utterly invalid. There's a lot wrong with this one. First, he's begging the question, because he calls evolution by natural selection a fact. Natural selection is a fact, not evolution. Next, he says natural selection is non-random, but the only worldview in which natural selection would be non-random is a worldview that has God. Without God, natural selection has no choice but to be random, and he failed to justify why it would be non-random. It appears as though he thinks it's non-random because, say, an animal mutates a camouflage to protect it from predators. Since it has that camouflage, it will survive, thus being non-random, but he ignores the fact that the mutation itself to make the camouflage was still random. Unless you want to say God did it, no conscious effort went into making the mutation. Furthermore, even then, that would not guarantee survival. For example, let's say we have the first creature with teeth. How does natural selection favor the animal with teeth? It can't be because now it can chew its food, because obviously its parents didn't have to chew food. Its brothers and sisters don't have to chew food, so the teeth aren't helping it, aren't helping it eat. And if you just try and imagine the kind of predators that would be around, also without teeth, the teeth aren't going to help. For example, it'll mo it would most likely be a fish, and if no fish has teeth, all fish swallow their food whole. Teeth are not going to help you prevent from being swallowed whole. Which moves me on to my next example of why natural selection would have to be random without God. Say you're a bug or insect. Doesn't matter what kind. Your colony's natural enemy is the spiders. Very venomous spiders. And you lucked out. In a one in a million shot, you are immune to the spider's venom, giving you a strong chance to survive. Then, you go and walk into a spider web and die anyway. Your one in a million advantage did not help you survive, and you died anyway. Without God guiding it, Natural selection is a random process. And lastly for this part, natural selection is not a third option. The argument from probability generally doesn't even get to natural selection. It can, but usually it refers to things like the cosmological constant or the speed of light and other constants that even if they were different by a very minute degree, you couldn't even have life let alone natural selection. You don't get natural selection until you already have life. Natural selection does not help Mr. Rationality's case at all. A third major flaw with the argument from improbability is that it commits, and indeed pretty much completely is, a giant argument from ignorance. Once the black and white fallacy has been disposed of, and once the role of natural selection has been acknowledged, the entire argument essentially boils down to the statement that we don't know how the universe and life was created, and so therefore an intelligent designer must have done it. It's a classical argument from ignorance, we don't know, therefore God. But in some cases, and in particular I'm referring to those who are either unaware of natural selection or don't understand it, the fallacy committed is actually a personal incredulity fallacy rather than an argument from ignorance. The difference being that the former states that we don't know, therefore God, while the latter states that I don't know, therefore God. Obviously, this is not an argument from ignorance. If he wants to say that an argument from probability is an argument from ignorance, then he's saying that every weatherman is making an argument from ignorance, and we shouldn't believe them. In fact, they shouldn't even try and tell us the weather, because weather predicting is just one big argument from ignorance. In fact, in our everyday lives, we use arguments from probability all the time. It's called inductive reasoning. We don't consciously calculate the probabilities, but they're still there. In fact, to write off probability as an argument from ignorance and just ignore whatever the probabilities are, that's actually begging the question.
You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. A fourth flaw that the argument from improbability commits is a special pleading fallacy. It does this because it first claims that exceptionally improbable phenomena is more likely to be the result of intelligent design than random chance, but it then makes an unsubstantiated special exception for the intelligent designer itself. Or in other words, it all goes back to the age old question, who designed a designer? And it offers no answer. The way Dawkins puts it, is that if the proponents of the argument from improbability want to assert that the existence of highly complex life on Earth is the equivalent of the implausible junkyard Boeing 747, then the existence of a highly complex god is the ultimate Boeing 747 that truly does require the seemingly impossible to explain its existence. Oh, this tired old argument. It's like atheists go out of their way to not understand first cause, or just causation in general. The probability of there being a first cause that was itself uncaused is 100%. It is impossible for it to be any less, unless you think an infinite regression is possible, in which case I cannot help you. Mr. Rationality actually offers no justification for the claim that God would need to be designed, as opposed to just existing for all eternity, past and present and future, complete as he is. Another objection to be had with the argument from improbability is that it quite ironically randomly assigns significance. Tracy Harris, a person who in my opinion deserves a lot more recognition, demonstrated this fact marvellously on the Atheist Experience show. To present a slightly different version of her point, if we were to roll 5 six sided dice, the probability of them all landing on 6 is 7,775 to 1. That's remarkably improbable. But here's the thing, the probability of getting any other outcome is also 7,775 to 1. The only thing that makes one role significant and the other insignificant is our perception of those roles. But how exactly is this relevant to the argument from improbability? Well, the argument is guilty of arbitrarily asserting that one role is significant simply because it's the role that happened. Proponents of this argument are essentially saying, hey look, if the dice didn't land on 3, 2, 4, 6 and 6, we wouldn't have a grand total of 21. If just one dice landed on any other number than it did, the grand total of 21 wouldn't exist. Therefore, an intelligent designer must have intended for this role to happen. In this analogy, the number 21 would equal life, meaning it's the only set of dice rolls that would equal life. That is by no means arbitrary. Also, only five dice is nothing compared to the actual probabilities being spoken of in the argument. I don't know how many cosmological constants improbably work for life, but let's assume for argument there's a just five. Each of those dice would have many more than six sides. Speed of light, for instance. Speed of light is over 500 thousand feet per second, that means the odds of the speed of light being that fast, just by chance, is well over 1 in 500,000, at least. So that's a 500,000 sided die, and you need one number off of it. That blows that 7,000 to 1 odds out of the water. So this last argument of his is trying to minimize the probability, so that you don't notice how improbable his worldview is. If I were to roll a dice five times and get a six every time, you might suspect that the dice are loaded, or that I have mastered throwing the dice so it always lands on six, but there'd still be a shadow of a doubt. You'd still think maybe it's possible that it was random. But if I rolled that same dice, the number of times it would take to equal the odds of just one of the cosmological constants, I would die before I even hit the number, either of starvation, dehydration, or old age, maybe, even. I don't know the exact numbers, so I can't be sure. But at the very least, I'd die of dehydration before I ever got to the number. At that point, 
you would know, you would not have any shadow of a doubt that the dice were either loaded or that I was some sort of expert at making them land on six every time. You would not think for an instant that it was some that it was just random luck. So why would you think the universe is just random chance?